Okay, um, unfortunately, the confidence intervals and as you're going to see, prediction intervals are not straightforward with just click, 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 because these are intervals about these variables. But what we want to do is do a confidence interval, which is about a mean value for y, and then look at a prediction interval, which is about an individual value. Okay, so I pretty much have everything where I ran the regression, so I got my summary output. This is my formula for my confidence interval. So as you can see, I'm going to have my um, prediction plus or minus my t, t critical value times my standard deviation. So as far as you learned in stats one, the interval's the same, plus or minus critical value times your standard deviation. And so now I just need to find everything. So I guess let's look right here. The critical value, what I did, is I did the t.inv.tutil, being a confidence. And one big thing to notice, because we have our two variables, the slope and intercept, is the degrees of freedom is actually in minus 2. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of these. That's why I'm using 3. So be careful with that, that it's in minus 2. All right, and still looking at the formula here, I can see that there are some different pieces that I'm going to need. So the S is just simply my standard error, and I'm given that from the output here my n of my sample size. And then what this is, is a given value of x, so in fact, probably be better for me to put the little asterisk there, minus the mean. So this given value, they give us three, and I'm just simply gonna subtract it from the mean, which is gonna be zero, and square it. And then on the previous video, I did this here on the bottom where I take each individual value minus the mean and then square it and sum all of those up. So that's what's happening here. I'm taking each x value minus the mean, squaring it, just doing that straight down. And then I sum that column. So now I have everything that I need to find. First, find my because I already have my critical value here. So let's look at my standard deviation um, about my prediction. So you can see the very first thing is the standard error, that's the S, times now my square root, one over my sample size, plus up top my given minus my mean squared, and then divided by the bottom, this 10, where I did all the sums of each individual value. All right, so from here now, I need a predicted y, because that's what my confidence interval is going to be about, my predicted y plus and minus all of this error that I came up with. So how do you get the prediction? Well, you take your regression equation, so my intercept plus my slope times this value. So that's my prediction. And then I just now simply use my formula and say, okay, use my prediction minus my T critical times my standard deviation of my prediction. And then the same thing here with the plus. So as you, you're, as you can see, there's going to be a lot of parts of this that you're going to have to do manually. So that's a confidence interval about the mean. If I wanted to do a prediction interval based off of a one particular observation, okay, so that's the difference with the prediction interval, there's just one little piece extra here. So most of it's going to be the same, everything that I did, all the different pieces. Let me highlight these because I used them. And then let's look at my error. So this one I did all in one step. Oh, same, same thing here. So the prediction interval is, as you can see back here, is going to still have my t. So here now I take my t times my standard error. 
times the square root. The only thing that's different is that one out front and then plus one over the sample size and then still my given value minus my mean squared all over the 10. So that's the only part that changed because now I'm, this is looking at a prediction, um, an individual value of y based on a given x. And so this would be my prediction interval and back over here that would be my confidence interval.